Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. You can go to live in France, but you cannot become a Frenchman. You can go to live in Germany or Turkey or Japan, but you cannot become a German or Turk or Japanese. But anyone from any corner of the earth, come to live in America and become an American. Welcome back to A Nation of Immigrants, Season 3, a bi weekly talk show program featuring the life of immigrants, knowledge, diversity, and inclusion, created by Think Tank Hawaii. Kingfield Law Office and the U.S. China Cultural Media Group. Our guests share their life stories, journey to the United States, and the contributions to cultural diversity. Today's guest is Eric Xiao Ran Liu, bamboo flute musician. Welcome, Eric. Hi. Hello, everybody. We are honored to have you here. You are the first musician we interview. And uh, if oh, you wow. uh, may, uh, let me read your short bio. Uh, Eric is a leading figure in the young generation of bamboo flute performers in China. He has been passionate about traditional Chinese music since childhood, under the guidance of renowned bamboo flute maestros like Zhang Weiliang, Chen Yue, Yuan Feifan, and Wang Xin. Eric has developed his diverse musical style. In 2012, he gained admission to the Minzu University of China in Beijing with the highest national ranking in music. Continuing his advanced studies, Eric now live live and work in New York City, and he will perform a solo concert at Carnegie Hall in New York City on January twenty one. What a great honor, Eric! And thank you so much for taking time to be on the show. We can imagine how packed your schedule must be at this moment. Only four days away from a solo concert at the Carnegie Hall. It's my great honor as well, and uh, it's uh, grateful to share my experience and uh, my thinking, my feeling as an immigrant musician uh, to all of, like, uh, all of the friends in, uh, in front of the, the TV and uh, live. Uh, the honor uh, is all ours. Thank you, Eric. And thank you. Uh, thank let's, you. Let's, let's start with your childhood, because in your bio, we mentioned that you are happy passionate about the Chinese traditional music in childhood. So could you share with some of your earliest memories of music and how they influenced your decision to pursue a career in traditional Chinese mu music, particularly with the bamboo flute? I would say that it's a very popular instrument and a major instrument in Chinese music, but uh, why a flute, bamboo flute in particular? Oh, of course. Uh, actually, there's um, there was no one in my family involved uh, in music. Most of my family members were in like medical field or working as um, uh, engineers. Um, I was doing great in my studies during my childhood, and uh, according to my family's uh, expectations, uh, they hoped I would pursue a uh, discipline uh, in science technology or maybe finance in the future. Uh, however, my mom has always uh, wanted me to learn uh, an instrument since my childhood. He hoped, hoped I would uh, learn the piano, but I wasn't interested in it at that time. Um, it wasn't um, until the sixth six degree, uh, six, sixth grade, when I was uh, watching TV and saw a promotional video uh, featuring many angels playing uh, instruments in heaven. Uh, there was a girl playing the bamboo flute in the very uh, graceful manner, and uh, it what was like caught my eyes. Uh, the entire presentation of playing the instrument uh, was like really charming. Uh, and from that day, I told my mom that if I were to learn an instrument, I wanted to learn the flute. Uh, that's how my journey into learning the flute began. Uh, and uh, another fun fact about that girl uh, who played in uh, played the flute in that commercial, I later met her when I went to study in Beijing. Uh, she happened to be a senior student of one of my mentors. Uh, so it feels like a, a dream coming true eventually. What a lovely story. It uh, feels like you fall in love with the bamboo flute on the first yeah. night. And, uh, yeah, exactly. And by pure serendipity, 
and then the, you met the the, uh, the female musician later in, in your uh, professional career. Uh, exactly, that's amazing. Let, let me. I want to show you something that bamboo flute is dear to me. That <laughs> I want to show you that yeah. all the bamboo flute I've been played in my life. That's <laughs> a good them. And uh, mm. I brought all of them from Beijing, and I still have the first bamboo flute my my a maestro gave to me thirty five years ago, and uh, that had been all taped, all taped in 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 in, in tapes because bamboo flute, as you know, that is they are very yeah. fragile. So exactly. I, I admire your music. I really. I feel honored to have this opportunity to interview you because you are a rising star in, oh, in Chinese music as a leading figure in younger generation of bamboo flute performers. And uh, so I, this is my hobby. I, I, I will never become a professional musician. Like a no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no way. Yeah, so even you teach me, I won't be able to make it. But uh, it's my hobby, but I understand, even as a professional, it is extremely hard to uh, to be a musician. So uh, in, in today's uh, you know global era, and now you are in, in New York City, in the United States. And I, I was wondering, how do you see the role of traditional Chinese music in today's global cultural landscape? Mm. Mm, this is a great question. Uh, you know, like, uh, first of all, let me uh, introduce uh, the knowledge about bamboo flute a little bit. Uh, the bamboo flute is one of the oldest musical instruments discovered in uh, archaeological history uh, with a history of around 9,000 years. And every country in the world right now has its own um, ethnic or like regional transverse flute. And the major genres today uh, are the like Asian version, like Chinese bamboo flute uh, and the Western flute. Uh, we often sing in like orchestras. However, uh, all these wind instruments are like somehow related. Uh, it's just, um, that in the course of uh, historical development combined with like different uh, regional uh, cultures, like different uh, languages and other factors, uh, they have evolved into different styles. Mm -hmm. uh, this not only applies uh, to wind instruments, but also to all forms of music. Uh, if we study uh, the history a little bit more, we will find that there's a commonality in human wisdom. For example, the uh, string instrument founded in ancient uh, Persia uh, spread to Europe and uh, gradually developed into violin. Uh, well, moving east uh, forward uh, and involved into our arhu. Uh, yeah. Understanding, yeah, understanding uh, this aspect uh, makes we can realize that the common mm, commonality in human culture and uh, at a higher level, uh, showing that our roots were, or at least had similar regions in many years ago. So knowing this, we will become more open-minded and uh, less uh, desiring of centralized power. So I think that's, um, yeah. Splendid, splendid, thank you so much. Uh, let, uh, I, I also want to mention that what I play is a uh, vertical flute. I understand you yep. play all kinds of flute. And uh, <laughs> uh, the horizontal one is harder. Uh, I, I, I believe it's much harder. You think so? Yeah, I think so. I think the vertical one is, uh, is a, a little bit easier. And as you um, emphasize, this vertical one is extremely similar to the uh, Japanese vertical flute. And they are almost oh, yeah. identical. The Japanese is just a shorter. It's called a uh, yeah. inch and eight, uh, and this uh, Chinese uh, vertical one just a little bit longer. And uh, exactly, in of, yeah. In terms of horizontal one, that you know, uh, no matter the uh, the cultural tradition, they they are strikingly similar. 
And obviously, it's a Chinese one are made by bamboo and jade and uh, you know other materials, but the Western one is made more to, uh, uh, of metal. But anyway, let's let's move on. Then you are yeah. Chinese musician and a professional living and working in the New York City and performing now in the most prominent music concert hall in New York, in the United States. And how has your experience in the United States uh, influenced your music and the performances? When did you come to the United States? And uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I came here uh, at um, 2018 mm -hmm. at summertime. No. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, this is a really good question. Uh, actually, uh, after I graduated from uh, my undergraduate degree in Beijing, uh, it's called the Minzu University. Uh, I had a very stable job. My main job was teaching music at the school, and uh, as my uh, side project, I uh, assist many uh, producers and singers with uh, recordings and uh, participating in live performance a lot. Uh, however, during that years, uh, I worked from uh, like 2016 to 2018. There were many issues in like in the whole music market, uh, such as the lack of uh, protection uh, for copyrights. Um, this was closely related to many musicians working uh, behind the scene, and uh, uh, the industry. Uh, demand for talent wasn't significant, and uh, only a small group of people can truly achieve uh, success uh, mm -hmm. in that industry. Uh, so I experienced uh, a lot of my students, even though they love this major, uh, but many of them had to switch to other professions. Uh, so when I saw this um, kinds of uh, issue frequently, I thought, oh, okay, it's the time to like stop my current job and explore uh, the world outside. Uh, that's why I decided to like stop a little bit and uh, move to United States. And uh, yeah, coming to New York uh, certainly had a significant uh, influence uh, or impact on my musical expression. The first year when I was uh, in New York City, I was mainly focused on learning English. Uh, so I found that the logical uh, of English actually quite similar to music. Oh. Like English is, oh. yeah, uh, that, that's my uh, personal opinion. Uh, we can like talk about, uh, like English is like very uh, like straightforward and, um, you know, uh, well, Chinese often pursues like a certain mood requiring the listener to, to filter and uh, integrate the information. Uh, this is very much like the logic in different music. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like Chinese that's, music that's, is... That's a great point, uh, Eric. <laughs> I, I'm very pleasantly surprised to hear that. I need to think uh, it, you know, more, think about it more, that the English uh, language is like music because music is logical. And the Chinese yeah. language, in our view, they are highly imaginative, literary, yeah, exactly, artistic, symbolic, pictorial, a graphic, yeah. and they are exactly. not in line, in particular, uh, with logic and reasoning. That's why we always say German language is better for law, and mm. language is uh, is in the same. Uh, family with German language. The Chinese language is best for arts and literature, but they are not good for legal uh, reasoning. And yeah, exactly. This is what I want to say. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see the connection between different, uh, like, different uh, fields, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. And yeah. music definitely is a music, it's a language. It's, it's, exactly. a, it's a higher level of language, a very difficult language, I would say. And, yeah. uh, and again, I want, we want to thank you for taking time your four days before your performance at Carnegie Hall and to be on the show. And performing at Carnegie Hall is a dream for many, many musicians. Uh, yeah. how, have you, how are you preparing for this significant event? 
And what does this opportunity mean to you personally and professionally? Oh, uh, so it's uh, such a great honor to uh, hold a solo concert at Carnegie Hall for me personally. I prepared for this uh, Red Call for like almost half a year. Uh, and uh, it's um, also, I would say it's also a significant success for Chinese bamboo flute uh, because uh, in the past uh, 20 years, uh, this is the first time Carnegie Hall has uh, hosted a solo concert featuring the Chinese bamboo flute. Um, so for me personally, uh, I feel like both, you know, nervous and exciting about this uh, performance, uh, especially the performance is uh, like right around the corner this weekend. Uh, so from the uh, professional perspective, uh, this concert uh, in the cultural capital of world in New York City, um, it certainly will be different. The concert aims to convey the uh, diverse and uh, inclusivity of Chinese music. Uh, so um, we committed to build a bridge that connects traditional and uh, modernity, uh, China and the world. So therefore the musical style will be very diverse, including traditional and uh, contemporary pieces, uh, aiming to provide the audience with a more comprehensive understanding of the possibilities of uh, Chinese music and uh, flute itself. Uh, so the performance difficulty is also quite high. <laughs> so, yeah, Definitely, and the flute is a very, uh, what we see is very rich. It's like uh, our who, uh, or who is yeah. like violin in, 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 in the Western music. Uh, they are yeah, it's a string. Uh, they, they can express a wide range of uh, you know feelings. And when we say solo concert, we, we don't really mean you only you will be on the stage. Uh, obviously, there will be a pianist. And uh, in, in Chinese music, uh, t uh, our, uh, a flute with a Zhong or Qin, the seven string Caesar or 21 string Caesar will, will become a, a orchestra. They, they, can, they can just express all kinds of human emotions by yeah. two instruments. And you've been, as a, a flute musician, you've been working with many composers and other musicians. Then yeah. could you share the highlights of some of your experience and uh, how do you work with different musicians and the composers and have this uh, in some way uh, uh, shaped your own musical style? Of course. Uh, so uh, recently, like, for example, I collaborated with uh, uh, like, uh, the Chinese, New York Chinese ensemble. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, it's um. Yeah, I was shocked that uh, this orchestra has a history of uh, more than 60 years in New York City. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, and the oldest musician in it is already in their 80s. Yeah, so you can see like they are still performing on stage, like seeing this level of passion for music uh, from the seniors is truly inspiring. And uh, recently, exactly last month, I also collaborated with uh, West East Ensemble from uh, Bart College, uh, mm -hmm. performing in Washington DC. Um, so, and uh, in that performance, I had the opportunity to meet the U.S. Ambassador to China, Nicholas Burns. Uh, mm -hmm. I performed, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I performed Chinese music for him, and uh, he was really enjoyed. Uh, and uh, mentioning how colorful and emotional Chinese music is. Uh, also, uh, for example, recently I uh, like uh, rehearsed with my uh, piano accompanist uh, for this Carnegie performance uh, a lot. Uh, her name is Patience. Mm. She's also really professional, uh, even though she's uh, like, uh, usually a very easygoing and cheerful girl, but as soon as uh, she's sitting in front of the piano, she has like a different personality oh, yeah. immediately. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, like, all yeah. of these collaborations are so inspiring and um, like make your, like my own musical 
experience are uh, really comprehensive and diverse. Cool, very cool. Thank you so much. And you basically, uh, I would say, gave up your tenure professorship in, at Ningbo University in China, and uh, you were you were once you were named the outstanding uh, young teacher uh, in Beijing. That yeah. you're young compared to me, you're very young. <laughs> but you're, you, you are te- you were a teacher, and you are a teacher right now. And yeah. uh, do you uh, inspire the, the next generation of musicians? And are, are you plan are you planning to continue your mentorship with younger generation musicians and the students? Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm uh, so interested uh, and uh, um, like into teaching uh, what I learned uh, before. So I think uh, in teaching field, uh, having empathy is uh, really crucial. Uh, I really enjoy teaching because, um, you know, there's a Chinese saying uh, goes, Jiao xue hu zhao. Wow. It means, yeah, it means like um, in process of teaching, uh, understanding and progress in knowledge are mutual. Uh, as a teacher, when I explain a piece of uh, knowledge to a student uh, in different ways, I'm also reviewing and uh, reinterpreting the, that knowledge. Uh, and uh, at the same time, each student has different uh, personality and uh, understanding. Mm-hmm. So in teaching, uh, I have to explore the method that suits each, each student. This is very interesting and uh, help me better understand how to communicate. Yeah. Good point. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned that uh, Ambassador Burns uh, thoroughly enjoyed uh, your music. And uh, for like the Chinese traditional music, uh, like the bamboo flute, how could the music uh, to serve as a bridge for cultural exchange and understanding between the Chinese and American people? Oh, this is a good one. Uh, so, um. As we mentioned before, playing bamboo flute and music uh, and uh, speak Chinese and English is the same. Mm -hmm. They are both uh, languages. Uh, It's just uh, music is a more universal language and uh, you don't have to worry about uh, grammar and or like vocabularies. Everyone can understand it. And uh, based on what they hear, they can understand the meaning within the music. Um, so, uh, in music, uh, there's no language boundaries. Um, as long as you are willing to spend some time to listening and feeling, you can always uh, discover the cultural connections. Um, that's why we always say the culture and uh, art are a um, form of like soft power in communication. Uh, especially uh, right now, I live in New York City. Uh, for all of my American friends who are very friendly, embarrassing, and eager to understand Chinese culture. Every time when I play Chinese music for my American friends, uh, they always say, like, oh, it's so beautiful. I can feel, I can see, like, mountains and flowing water, uh, something like that. That's all aspects of uh, cultural exchange. So I believe uh, traditional music, um, plays a significant role in like uh, cultural exchange between America and China. It's truly a bridge. I, I cannot agree with you more. That music doesn't need any translation, and music is universal. <laughs> exactly. Music can touch every uh, corner of the earth and touch everybody's heart. And we are running out of time, but I do have uh, three quick questions I want you to uh, answer if we if we can. The first one is, uh, as a, a Chinese musician living in New York City, what are the most significant challenges in your career, uh, and particularly uh, after you came to the United States, and how do you overcome those challenges? Mm. So I think uh, it's not a challenge just for myself. Uh, it's in general for all of the musicians, uh, like uh, like. Challenge, challenges in area like um, l- lack of uh, copyright protection, uh, like um, and um, like all the talented 
are hard to make living through music or art after they spend a long year to learn music or mm -hmm. art. Uh, even in New York, uh, trying to make a uh, bamboo flute or Chinese uh, traditional music uh, recognized by the market and the audience, uh, I think it still has a long way to go. Um, as a younger generation artist, mm, I'm uh, still thinking and uh, actively trying to find solutions to these challenges. Thank you very much. And you build a company, Fusion, yeah. right? Yes, what, yes. What does that, what that mean? Oh, uh, so it's a combination of what Fusion itself and Ocean. So the spelling is like F-U-C-E-A-N. And the uh, uh, slogan for this company is Fusing the Ocean. Uh, okay. Actually, from this uh, company is a start from uh, uh, when I prepared for the uh, Carnegie concert. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so eventually, uh, my business partner and I formed this company aim to, um, you know, find more uh, artists and uh, help them to, uh, like, as we mentioned before, like there's lots of challenges and the difficulties uh, we are aiming through this platform to assist more artists uh, in recognize their value. So, and uh, bring all artists together. Yes, that's a great idea. And uh, so yeah. now the, the next question uh, is that uh, you're young, but if you time travel permits, you can travel back in 10 years in time to your early 20s. And what advice would you give to yourself and uh, or give to the younger generation? I would say, bro, you definitely find the most difficult uh, way, but um, pursue your dream and uh, always uh, find something that can give you some uh, self motivation. Although this uh, path is going to be really difficult, but don't be afraid. Yeah. Thank you. That's yeah. a great decision and a very good advice. Last but <laughs> not least, we normally ask our distinguished guests to uh, make a recommendation uh, a, a book, uh, uh, a movie, or a music. And uh, mm. I'm going to take the liberty now first to recommend your, mu uh, your, your mu music concert on January 21 at the Carnegie Hall. Thank you. Everybody Thank to you. the go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm looking forward to see more audience of this show <laughs> in Carnegie Hall. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, first, thank you so much for taking time to be on the show. Second, thank you, Mr. Wang. A fantastic achievement, and uh, to be uh, as a solo a musician to perform at Carnegie Hall. What a great honor! And uh, we look forward to hear more about your music, to hear more about your story, and we look forward to welcoming you back on the show. Thank you, Eric. I will. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wang. Thank you very much. Aloha. See you next time. Thank you.